how do I keep track of the chord changes in the blues for soloing? If you have trouble playing lead and following the chord changes, you need to prime yourself. You need to understand uh, on your own where those chord changes are, are gonna be and realize that you can do it if you practice like this. Now you pretend you're a drummer and you're gonna cue in the rest of the band. All right, welcome back to another episode of Guitar Fundamentals on Stitch Method. Currently in the room I grew up in, in New York, kind of cool. Uh, today's lesson is actually brought to you by one of my students, Jeff. Now, Jeff had this question and I've taught this a uh, couple times and I realized, you know what? It's a great fundamental video. Uh, I find, a, I, I get a lot of questions, which is how do I keep track of the chord changes in the blues for soloing? A lot of people, they go to load up backing tracks and they miss the chord changes for 12 bar blues and they're soloing and, and they wanna like solo with the chords, kind of like in this video up here. And, um, you know, it's, if, if you can't hear those chord changes, then it's gonna be very difficult for you to solo with them. So this is an exercise that you wanna do if you have trouble uh, following the chord changes and this will help prime you, like really um, get you so close to feeling those chord changes uh, that when you're playing with the back and track or someone else, you, you'll be able to predict them. And it's very, very simple. So what do you need to do? Well, first you need to be able to play a 12 bar blues on guitar. We're gonna be doing a 12 bar blues in E. We're actually gonna keep it very, very simple. And we're gonna use an E7 chord, which is like an E chord, but you lift up your ring finger. An A7. And the B7. All right, E7, A7, B7. Now, the problem is, Really, if you're having a hard time, if you play with a band or anything, if you're having a hard time um, uh, hearing those chord changes, we can really blame the drummer. I'm sorry if you're a drummer, or I'm sorry if you're best friends with your drummer. You have to educate a drummer on how to cue you in for the chord changes in a 12 bar blues. If you're just playing a 12 bar blues, for instance, like this, and give me a couple seconds. Like one, two, three, four. Like that and your drummer is just doing this and when the chord change comes just does this he hasn't done his job if you listen to any blues uh you know that's worth its weight you're going to hear the drummer cue in the um rest of the band as to where the chord change is coming so a drummer really has to know where or how a 12 bar blues works but let's say you don't have a drummer how do you do it yourself well you become your drummer check this out so from now on what you're going to do is you're going to get a palm mute going a nice get the little fleshy part of your palm near the bridge and you're going to do the standard blue shuffle of one a two a three a four and all i'm doing is the one a two a three a four and you can do that three times one a two a three a four fourth one you don't do that now you pretend you're a drummer and you're going to cue in the rest of the band and what you're going to do is a set of triplets four triplets triple it triple it triple it triple it and and the way you're going to do it is you're you're excuse me going to come off your mute and you're going to start with a triplet on the kind of thick strings like triple it then grab more of the guitar triple it grab more of the guitar triple it and the fourth one triple it Bring that chord to life as if you're a drummer going one, a two, a three, a four, a triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. And that cue of the drummer is going to let everyone know, oh, our chord change is coming. And if your drummer doesn't do that, then you got to do it. And if you don't have a drummer, guess what? You still got to do it. And the more you do this and practice like this, the more you actually will be able to hear it like imaginary, you know, even if your drummer doesn't do it and it's going to help prime you. So your first chord change is going to sound like this. One, a two, a three, a four, a two, a two, a three, a four, a three, a two, a three, a four, a triple and triple and triple and triple and triple. Then you're going to go to your four chord, which is your A7. Now, this one's a little bit different. This one here, you now have to do for two bars, but instead of doing one bar of the blues rhythm and one whole bar of the triplet, it's a little bit shorter. You're gonna do one, no, you, okay, I should say this. When you're playing the A7, now your pick is on your A string, still muting, and you're gonna go, you're gonna go one, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a triplet, triplet. That's all I got, okay? 
Okay, so check out these first two changes. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. One, two, three, four, one, two, triple it, triple it. And back into your one chord for two more bar, two more bars. And this, when you go back to the E, it's the same exact thing that you did for the A. One, two, three, a four, a one, a two, a triple, a triple. So right now we have the one chord for four bars, the four chord for two bars, and back to the one chord for, chord for two bars. And you want to use this format uh, when you're playing by yourself uh, to, to develop the ear for where those chord changes are. And so I will get to the whole 12-bar blues, but this is what we have so far. <coughs> Now we get to the five chord, that's the B7. And what we wanna do here is that B7 in, in a 12 bar blues, this gets one bar, a four count. And you wanna go one, a two, a three, a four, a. We're gonna arpeggiate this. It's still, we're gonna use the swing eighth notes. It is the rhythm of one, a two, a three, a four, but we're arpeggiating it. One, a two, a three, a four, okay? Again, down, 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 up, up, up. One, a two, a three, a four. We go to the A for one bar, same exact arpeggio. One, a two, a three, a four, a. And then we're gonna go to our one chord. One, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a triple, a triple. And if you can play a 12 bar blues like this, you are helping cue yourself uh, into where those chord changes are so that when you're soloing, you can almost predict, well, you will be able to predict what those chord changes are because you will have practiced the chord changes as if you were a guitar uh, player and a drummer at the same time. So the whole 12 bar blues that you want to practice to help you hear your chord changes better sounds like this. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, triple the triple. Just like that. Pretend you are the drummer cueing in, cueing in the guitar players. And then you can be like, in your band practice, like, move out of the way, boom, boom, bah, and play some drums and get those fills going. And you know, if this uh, works for you in this video, if you're going, okay, this is cool, and you are playing with the drummer, show them this video. It's, it's not bad, that, but the, uh, the drummer needs to know, you know, how a 12 bar blues really feels and how to cue the rest of the band in. And if you're a rhythm guitar player, you can do this as well if your drummer's not doing it, and that's gonna help cue the other players. If you're a lead guitar player, you wanna play this as much as possible so that when you're playing lead, you can almost hear yourself doing it, and it helps predict those chord changes for a standard 12-bar blues. So this is a quick Guitar Fundamentals videos, video, but if you have trouble playing lead and following the chord changes, you need to prime yourself you need to understand uh, on your own where those chord changes are, are gonna be and realize that you can do it if you practice like this. And if you practice like this, you should magnetize yourself. It, it will magnetize yourself that, so that you could really predict those chord changes in the future. Let me know how it goes. Thank you so much for uh, being here and I'll see you soon on another episode of Guitar Fundamentals on Stitch Method. Bye-bye.